<laughs> so you might be wondering why your ears were graced with the best evil video game laugh in the history of video games. Well, about a year ago, I made this video and talked all about the way EA could monetize The Sims 5. I mentioned subscriptions and I remember getting comments about how subscriptions were never coming to The Sims 5 because it wasn't 2004 anymore and WoW was dying and yada yada yada. Well, all I have to really say is I told you so. If you missed all the fun recently, let me catch you up. There were some posts on EA's job website that had some very interesting information about what could possibly be coming to The Sims 5. One of the requirements was that you have experience with subscription-based services. Now, asking that someone have experience in subscription-based services isn't a guarantee that they will show up in the game, but it's quite telling that EA is getting talent together that can take monetization in The Sims 5 in any direction that they want to take. And mark my words, EA has been salivating at the thought of shoehorning microtransactions into The Sims for years. All you have to do is look at the other franchises EA creates and you can see where The Sims is going. Even though EA makes billions of dollars from The Sims, it isn't enough for them. They don't want some of the money, they want all of the money. The more, the better. We all know EA is greedy, right? Is anyone going to refute that point? I mean, when a company single-handedly gets the attention of world governments around egregious loot boxes and gambling and video games, you know the company is greedy. How'd that greed work out for you, EA? Getting sued by fans, pulled in front of the UK's parliament, your games banned in other countries, and now you get stripped of the Star Wars exclusivity deal. Wow. You got a pass with Battlefront 2 because of the ridiculous amount of money you were making, but you were taken down by The Sims. That's almost poetic. The community you have been screwing over for years caused you to lose a huge exclusive license. This is just a theory, but I dare say Disney didn't like the backlash or the poor sales of Journey to Batu. and EA tried everything to get that pack sold. They put that pack on 50% off a month after the pack came out. They paid Disney vloggers to play the game for their audience. There was so much more to Journey to Batu that people didn't even bother to talk about. I don't want to rehash other videos I've made, so you can find out more here. Let's talk in depth about subscriptions, how I think they would work, and why EA wants to have them. It's no big secret that video game companies keep an eye on what everybody else is doing in the industry. And who happens to be making quite a bit of money from subscriptions? Nintendo. I've seen some people say that they think EA is going to stop charging for DLC and is going to give away all the DLC for the cost of a subscription. I highly doubt that's what they're going to do. EA isn't going to give up millions and millions of dollars in sales to just get subscription fees every month. This is just my opinion, but I believe that subscription fees are going to be implemented if you want to access multiplayer. We've already heard that there's going to be some kind of online feature for the game, and it makes sense that EA would want to charge for it. I mean, they charge for everything else. I imagine the executives at EA have been eyeing what Nintendo has been doing with their online subscription fees. Nothing against Nintendo, but you don't even need to have good online features. People will still pay in droves so they can play with their friends. This makes much more logical sense to me than giving DLC away essentially for free. Another thing that got people talking was the fact that they wanted a UI system that would work on all platforms, mobile, tablet, PC, console. For me, I think this is more akin to what they did with The Sims 4 and The Sims Mobile. I am sure EA made a ridiculous amount of money on The Sims Mobile because apparently people are totally fine with paying for color swatches and buying the same game twice. It would not surprise me in the least that EA is looking to do something like that again because they got two games for the price of one. Let's talk about something else that got people talking, cross-platform gaming in The Sims. Now, cross-platform is a term used by gaming companies when they allow people from, say, the PlayStation to play with people online on the Xbox. It's the same for PC players playing with console players. If you had any doubts about the fact that the next Sims game is gonna be online or have an online component, well, I guess you got your answer. I honestly don't know how to feel about this because it took the Sims team literally years to get the gallery to work cross-platform. We could be looking at another disaster like SimCity if they're not careful because we all know they didn't learn a darn thing from SimCity. I've seen quite a few posts talking about experience in mobile games and that makes me a little bit uneasy. It's no secret that I don't really care for mobile games. I don't like the grindy gameplay. I don't like the player manipulation into buying things. I don't like the monetization practices. The things that I hate are exactly what EA loves to put in their games. Also, if we're talking about cross-platform games, including tablets and mobiles, that means they're going to make a mobile game first and then port it over to 
console and to PC. Unless they do exactly what they did with The Sims 4 and The Sims Mobile, that's how it's gonna work. And we're gonna get a subpar PC game. I'm really not a fan of that either. I don't want features Ooh. held back or cut because they can't work in a mobile version. For me, the cons outweigh the pros. Sure, we might get a game that runs better, but it's gonna be stripped out of all the interesting gameplay that we normally get in Sims games. And replaced with limited time events and grind. No thank you. Something else I wanna mention is console parity. Basically, it means that console and PC have to look and run similarly. This usually means that PC is the one that gets the downgraded version of the game with lower frame rates and lower resolution so the game performs exactly the same as it would on console. If we're gonna have cross-platform play between mobile and PC, they're going to have to run the same game. They might be able to get away with having a smaller resolution and less frames on a mobile device, but the games have to be identical. That means PC players are gonna get the shaft in favor of mobile-friendly gameplay, and I, for one, am not okay with that. Something I didn't mention in my original video about The Sims 5 being online is if this game is gonna be 100% online, you can kiss mods and CC goodbye. To be quite honest, I don't know how a 100% online game would even have mods and CC. I've played other online games that have had mod support, but that usually requires you to have a server or everybody who is playing has the same mods or they don't see them. To be quite honest, I don't believe EA has the knowledge or the talent to code something as sophisticated as this. I guess maybe the mods could be kept client side, but then they'd have to be really simple because you couldn't actually affect the core gameplay at all. And how would the game handle you playing with others and them not having the exact same content that you have? I guess EA could try to do something like Bethesda did with the Creation Club, although I don't agree that they should profit off of user-generated content. They could also go the Second Life route with user-generated content, but I don't know how that would work with their T rating or them trying to dumb the game down to appeal to children. I'm not that familiar with Second Life, but I do know the game is adults only. I know for a fact that there isn't enough moderators or filters to do exactly what Second Life is doing in The Sims, especially if you want to keep your T for teen rating. Something that caught my attention was that they want this person coming into the team to have knowledge of mods and CC. Not just that, but they want them to know of the popular ones. Something about that just doesn't sit right with me. There have been more than a few occasions that <laughs> players have wondered if EA was, well, I can't use the word copying, let's use the word inspired by CC creators. They've mentioned that they do play around with mods and see if they can add those features to the game. That just feels a little bit icky to me. Players make CC and mods in their own time and put them out for free and EA is like, yeah, you know what? Free real estate. Let's get those. Let's make money off of them. It doesn't set right with me that EA wants developers to know what's popular so that they can make a paid for version of it. Let's move on to something I thought was kind of telling. They're working in the Unreal Engine. Why is this particularly interesting to me? Well, EA has in-house engines like Frostbite, ones that they've created themselves and don't have to pay licensing fees for. Now, to be quite honest, this is a relief to me because they're not using some shoddy engine they threw together to make The Sims 4 work when they decided they didn't want to do multiplayer anymore. And they're also not trying to shoehorn it into Frostbite, which has a whole bunch of problems that I won't get into. It's also interesting that they mention the Unity engine as well as Unreal. It's almost like they're unsure which engine they're going to use and are trying to cover all their bases. The reason this is so strange and out of the ordinary is EA usually has their own engine. I guess time will tell which one they decide to use. I'm just really happy they're not using a garbage engine and they're actually using something that's powerful. No more excuses of the engine not being powerful enough to do things. I don't have to tell you how much I dislike that cop-out excuse, do I? On the other hand, I'm also not surprised that they chose Unreal Engine because Unreal Engine only charges 5% royalty fees. The 5% that they're gonna pay in royalty fees for using the Unreal Engine is probably a lot less than they would pay for building their own engine. This is just a little pet theory of mine. But I wonder if the reason why we aren't getting The Sims 5 anytime soon is because the whole team had to switch over to the Unreal Engine and learn how to use it. That would definitely add extra time onto the development of the game. The last thing I wanna talk about is I find this kinda interesting that they wanna have someone who understands streaming on Twitch and Mixer, which Mixer has been gone for, I think, what, almost a year now? So it's kinda funny that that's listed there. I also agree that they need to find someone who understands streaming because the last stream that they had was an absolute disaster. Not only was the quality absolutely garbage, but they had someone on there who didn't really seem like they knew what they were doing or was very enthusiastic to be showing off the pack. That definitely doesn't show the developers in a good light. I usually don't watch the live streams myself because they're usually too long and too boring and I usually have something else to do that's more important than sitting and watching a developer live stream. I popped my head into the last one and I probably only stayed for about a minute. How can you be a developer for The Sims or for PAX and not know how they work? What happened to the other gurus who used to do the live streams? There used to be four or five people hanging out on the live stream all talking 
talking and chatting? What happened to those people and what happened to the good time that you used to have on stream? I get the fact that the players are not happy with the developers or the game right now, but you can't just ignore chat and fumble around with the game and expect people to enjoy that. Maybe getting someone who understands how to stream is for the best. I think everybody involved would like to avoid what happened last time. If you want to sell some game copies, you should probably have some passion for the game. If not, it may be time to move on to something else.